Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, I just wanted to drop a reminder to go and check out Chilling. If you haven't heard about Chilling yet, you're missing out. Chilling is the top spot for horror with over 400 scary stories, with zero ads, ranging from true crime to creepypastas. New stories are added every week with some fresh new ones narrated by me. And it's not just me either. Chilling has a ton of your favorite narrators to choose from, with more being added. Chilling allows you to customize your background music with their one-of-a-kind ambient menu, and it offers a sleep timer to shut down the app in case you doze off. Chilling offers a free trial to test things out, and it's only $2.99 per month after that. I highly recommend checking out Chilling and giving it a try. Just because Halloween is over, it doesn't mean that you have to give up your favorite spooky content. Thanks again to Chilling for having me on. Welcome to the hospital, Mrs. Smith said. You are now a surgeon. I wanted to work at a hospital since I was a kid. I always liked the idea of saving lives, and now my dreams came true. I got in the car and went to the hospital. It was a big old building. When I entered, I talked to the receptionist. Hello, uh, my name is John, and I am the new surgeon. Okay, she said. I'll take you to the manager, Mrs. Smith. The manager was a tall, middle-aged woman. Hey, I'm John. I introduced myself. Well, hello, John, she said. Your job will be very important. You will be saving lives. Let me show you the operating room. The operating room was a big, modern-looking room, with a large operating table and a lot of equipment. When I had finished up talking to Mrs. Smith, she gave me the key. This is the key to your locker. The lockers are in the next room over. I then went to the locker room. When I opened my locker, I saw an envelope with my name on it. I opened it, and inside was a paper list. It said, Rules to survive the night shift. Rule number one. Between 7pm and 9pm, don't go to the operating room. There will be no patients. If you hear voices coming from the room, don't go in. They want you to join them. Rule number two. If they bring in an old man with his guts falling out, you must say, I can't help you, sir, and go to the first floor. Rule number three. Between 9pm and 11pm, stay on the reception. Rule number four. Don't look out of the window. If you hear crying, ignore it. Rule number five. Make sure that all doors are closed at 11 p.m. If you forget it, it'll be too late. Rule number six. You can then sleep until 11.30 p.m. Rule number seven. At exactly 11.30 p.m., go to the manager's office. If you see a light coming from the operating room, run. Go to the restroom on the third floor and close the doors behind you. You will hear banging at the door. Ignore it. When the banging stops, you are safe to go. Rule number eight. Go to the x-ray room. If you hear beeping, put radiation shielding on immediately. The radiation is very dangerous. There should be a patient. Take him to the operating room. He received a dangerous dose of radiation. Take his clothing off and inject him with the blue syringe. Don't use the green one. And then take him to the reception. He is then free to go. Rule number nine. Exactly at midnight, a deathly sick patient will come. Ignore him and stay away from him. It's a lot more than just bad. It's worse and it's contagious. Rule number 10. Go to the manager's office and hide. He will come and he will be searching for you. 
and then he would disappear at once. Don't touch him. You don't want to infect yourself. He will decompose until the morning. Rule number 11. Do not answer any phone calls. Rule number 12. If you hear your wife's voice, don't follow it. It isn't her. You know that she's dead. Rule number 13. Don't touch the blue pills. They can cure disease, but they must remain a secret. The world isn't ready for them yet. Rule number 14. When you finish all this, go to the basement, and there will be a big metal door. Enter the passcode 2243233, and the doors will open. Go inside, and go to the stairs, and then go down, and enter the first room on your left. It'll be a secret laboratory. Don't feed the creatures inside of the tanks. Instead, look through the microscopes. There will be samples of all the diseases that currently exist. Be careful not to infect yourself. Drop liquid from the green syringe onto each sample, and the samples will begin to mutate. There should be the cage with mice on the table. Inject each mouse with one of the samples, and write down the results, but be careful. They can bite. Enter the next room, and there should be an alien body. Don't touch it, it's also infected. Climb with the ladder to the first floor. Rule number 15. If there is a receptionist, you must tell her that you just went to check something. Rule number 16. Go to the operation room and lay on the bed. You may feel pain, but nothing will be happening to you. Pretend that you are asleep. They think poison is for anesthesia. If they see that you're awake, they will give you it. Rule number 17. Don't listen to the voices. They don't exist. It's all your imagination. Believe me. Rule number 18. If you see a man in a black suit, take him to the operating room and cut him open. There will be a scalpel in his body. Take it out. When he wakes up, you must tell him. I'm sorry that I forgot the scalpel inside your body last time. He will thank you and go. When you finish all the rules, take the green pill. Then go to the parking lot and wait until someone comes to take you home. If the individual who comes to pick you up has a car that's black, don't enter it. Wait for the next one. Follow the rules and stay safe. Mrs. Smith. I couldn't believe it. I thought that it was a joke. I went to the operating room and almost puked. On the operating table was a man laying cut open. All his organs were out on the floor. And there was a man with a knife standing beside the table. I quickly closed the door and ran to the elevator. I wanted to go home, but the elevator fell. Luckily, these safety systems worked and I was able to get out. And I went to the reception. Suddenly, I heard crying outside of the window. I almost looked when I remembered rule number four. Don't look out the window. If you hear crying, ignore it. I almost broke another rule, I thought to myself. I gotta be more careful next time. I looked at the clock. It said 11 p.m. I recalled rule number five. Make sure all the doors are closed at 11 p.m. If you forget it, it'll be too late. And I quickly closed all the doors. I set my alarm clock at 11.30 p.m., as it said in rule number six. Before I fell asleep, I wrote down rule number seven. At exactly 11.30 p.m., go to the manager's office. If you see a light coming from the operating room, run. Go to the restroom on the third floor and close the doors behind you. You will hear banging at the door. Ignore it. When the banging stops, you are safe to go. I woke up to the sound of an alarm clock. I went to the manager's office. Suddenly, I heard the sound of footsteps behind me. I looked back and saw the operating room door open and there was a light coming from it. Something was coming out of it and it was heading my way. I quickly ran up the stairs to the third floor. 
I almost felt and caught a glimpse of the thing that was following me. Its face was all messed up and there were worms falling from it. It was holding a scalpel and it said, Time to open you up. I ran into the restroom and shut the door. It was banging at the door. But suddenly, the banging stopped. I got out. And I remembered rule number eight. Go to the x-ray room. If you hear beeping, put radiation shielding on immediately. The radiation is very dangerous. There should be a patient. Take him to the operating room. He received a dangerous dose of radiation. Take off his clothes and inject him with the blue syringe. Don't use the green one. And then take him to the reception. He is then free to go. I went to the x-ray room. Suddenly, I heard a beeping sound, but I couldn't find any shielding. I went out. I really hope I wasn't exposed to any radiation. I continued as rule number nine said. Rule number nine. Exactly at midnight, a sickly patient will come. Ignore him and stay away from him. He's a lot worse off than what he looks like. And it's also contagious. I saw a young man on the reception, and he said that I must help him, but I just ignored him. I remembered a rule number 10. Hide in the manager's office. He came and he searched for me, but then he disappeared. At this point, I was feeling tired and my skin was burned. I started to taste metal. I immediately recognized the signs of radiation poisoning, but it was time to follow rule 14. When you finish all of this and go to the basement, there will be a big metal door. Enter the passcode, 2243233 and the doors will open. Go inside, go to the stairs and go down. Enter the first room on your left. It'll be a secret laboratory. Whatever you do, don't feed the creatures inside of the tanks. Instead, just look through the microscopes. There will be samples of all the diseases that currently exist. Be careful not to get infected. Drop liquid from the green syringe onto each sample, and the samples will mutate. There should be the cage with mice on the table. Inject each mouse with one of the samples. Write down the results. But be careful, they can bite. Enter the next room. There should be an alien body. Don't touch it, it's infected. But climb up the ladder to the first floor. I went to the basement and I found the door. I entered the passcode. 2243233. And then I went inside. I went to the laboratory. I could see blisters on my skin, but I fought through and kept going. There were tanks with creatures that should not exist. I looked through the microscopes. There were diseases that I had never even seen or heard of. My skin started peeling, and my breathing became harder. I dropped the liquid on the samples, and then I injected it into the mice. They grew spider legs, human ears, and their heads fell off, and they got lizard-like skin. I wrote down the results quickly. At this point, I could barely walk, so I entered the next room. There was an alien body, and it was tall and green. There was slime littering all the floors. Suddenly, I felt a sharp pain in my chest, and I fell to the floor. I started coughing up blood. The radiation from the x-ray room was finally getting me. But then I saw a cabinet. I opened it, and inside were boxes full of pills. I looked at the boxes and I found one that said, Radiation Illness Cure. I grabbed it and I opened it. I took out the pill with shaky hands and I lifted it up to my mouth. But I couldn't do it. I dropped it. My skin was peeling off and my bones were starting to show. My eyes were bursting and I was losing my vision. And then my heart stopped. I woke up from a horrible nightmare. I was covered in sweat. It had all seemed so real. I did a quick check of my skin. It seemed okay. Didn't seem to be affected from any radiation. 
It was all only a dream. It wasn't real. I was tired, but it was my first day on my new job. Today, I became a surgeon. I ate breakfast, brushed my teeth, and dressed up. Got to the car, and I drove to the hospital. I entered. The receptionist had called me. She gave me an envelope and said, Welcome to your new job. Don't forget to read the rules if you want to stay safe. I'll take you to the manager.